okay so yesterday i told that we will start with the http today but before going to the http we will cover few things in the node js right and that things are nothing but events and buffers streams right events buffers and the streams so node js events first we will see how events are happening so what do you mean by event node js events yeah events if you see this i'm talking about this class right so when you talk about node js events can you see much of the node js api are built around idiomatic asynchronous event driven architecture in which certain kind of object emit named events that cause the function objects to be called for example uh, server <coughs> and their stream so this example they have given events so when you talk about when there is a situation when one part of the code one part of the code is going to communicate with the another part of the code means here some processing has happened and a result of that processing need to be passed to the another part of the code we call it as what you can say communication this communication generally happens by means of events this communication i can say this as communication this communication generally happens this communication generally happens by means of events right and node has classical structure about that now when you talk about events remember that again you are talking about asynchronous programming means processing has started in this processing has started in this unit or this piece of code and we really don't know when processing will end right when processing will end and what i want to do i want to update the states like i have started the processing i am processing the data and my processing has been completed kind of example this is for example for example you need to give three types of the events to another thing another piece of code or another code unit so on the starting something this unit can do something on the processing this unit can do something and on the completing the processing this code unit can do something to achieve this communication there are multiple ways also like callbacks so whenever this will start it will send three functions to this first on start give me on start please call this function on start please call this function on end and whenever you have some progress in your data right please call this function means this can supply three different functions to whenever whenever it gets the object of this code unit or whenever it gets hold on this code unit it can pass this three functions this can be achieved by means of callback function right but every time creating a callback function is not that usual or not that correct way every time how many callback functions you will pass if there are such 100 things are you going to create 100 callback functions no there should be some sophisticated way of working and that sophisticated way is nothing but this event communication if you see here passing argument and this to the listeners 
if you see here right so they have given all the things asynchronous versus synchronous event emitter calls listener synchronously in order to whatever we will come to this point little bit later on but event emitter api are these someone is going to emit the event and someone is going to listen the event okay someone is going to emit the event and someone is going to listen for the particular event okay now now what we will do just a moment huh? now what we will do let's try to type the code of the event emitter and new folder this is day 6 new file i can create main.js i can say what main.js I hope you have cleared the idea of event when you are going to use the event. Let me give you one more real time example. Let me give you one more real time example. Uh, it is like that in the terms of you now business logic, I'll give you an example. This is your invoice application. So th this piece of code is creating invoice and this piece of code is your what you can say stock of your company so concern is that whenever invoice get created stock should get uh, what you can say one event or stock should get one notification that invoice for particular stock has been generated whenever invoice gets created and similarly whenever new stocks get added it should be updated to, to the invoice service red stock has been updated please do your regular stuff if you want to do so this is how these two code units will work together this is how these two code units will work together they are loosely coupled by means of event if you pass the functions they are tightly coupled but if you create something called as event in between them these are loosely coupled so now consider what do you mean by tightly coupled whenever you create an invoice that should give a message to that should send a message to this stock right so you will pass function please give me please call this function whenever you get the invoice the thing is that Whenever you pass the function, this stock is completely dependent on the invoice. I don't want that dependency also. When there is a situation where you don't want dependency, loosely coupled, right? When you need a loosely coupled architecture, these events will help you a lot, right? Means although this invoice service fails, still this stock service will work. If this invoice piece of code would be stop performing it should not impact execution on this this should work independently this should work independently and this can be achieved by means of events there are many situations where events would be helpful to you okay now events is a built-in node module remember that events is what built-in node module let's get this event emitter let's copy I am getting event emitter okay const event emitter then you need to create const em is equals to new event emitter is equals to new event emitter 
is equals to what new event emitter now if you when you create an event emitter you can start listening on the event let's let's see here em dot em dot on on means what on this what you can say on this string or on this key invoices right on this key and here you need to pass the listener here you need to pass what a listener invoices and can you see here first is a key that key can be xyz pq or any arbitrary string and here we can say console.log just got an update this is a communication between the piece of code remember that this is not a communication between your android device and node.js service no two node parts are communicating with each other by means of this event emitter functionality now here what we can do set timeout and here let's write this lambda this function would be getting called after how much time this function would be getting called after 300 milliseconds and from here I'm going to say em dot emit emit on what invoices emit on this key and here I can pass the object that I would like to pass that object is is nothing but what you can say inv inv number say like this one 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 two hash zero two hash twenty twenty like this invoice number and inv a inv amt inv amt we can say thousand dollar something like that we need to do okay emitter dot emit event like this okay now let us see what happens if i run this code uh, so spelling is wrong about the uh, event which we are emitting the invoices okay V O I Node main dot JS. What you have? Oh, folder has not been selected. CD day six. Node main dot JS. Can you see just got an update? So you have so let, let me delete this thing for now. Let me delete this thing for now. Okay. Now see. Just got an update. After every three seconds, you will get the op update. Now you can see this is working in one module. Em emitting is happening in one module, and your subscribing is happening your in another module. Means one piece of code is start is sending data to another piece of code. Okay. This is what this package is on. You can just pass the functions. And there are many, many things available over here. You can error, emit the errors like that. Okay. Now if, if someone is emitting the package, if someone is emitting the promise, then how it exactly works something like that many things are there actually you just 
go in detail with this and you will get to know how this thing exactly works okay now what I need to do now what I need to do is that I just need to pass an I just need to pass the parameters with the events need to pass what parameters with the event which is nothing but this part I'm just telling you I can type the code immediately but I would like to show you the things that we are going to implement right okay now let's try to emit something so we have used arrow functions remember that now the event emitter emit method allows an arbitrary set of arguments to be passed to the listener functions if you see method allows an arbitrary set of arguments to be passed to the method listener the method listener functions keep in mind that when ordinary listener function is called the standard this keyword intentionally set to the reference of event emitter okay let's let's try this so here what i want to do i would like to pass the object like this okay i want to pass the object like this and here you can say obj now i'm going to print console dot log this I'm going to print over here console dot log obj that's what they have written in the document stop it try to run the node main dot js after 3000 3, 3, milliseconds can you see just got an object or just got an update this is pointing to the empty object right this is pointing to what one of the empty object and this obj is pointing to ib uh, invoice number and like this so they are talking about this this keyword is intentionally set to the reference to event emitter instance to which the listener is attached now this case but presently it is showing what Presently, it is showing the empty object. What they are saying? The standard this keyword is intentionally set to the reference to the event emitter instance, but it is not a reference to the event emitter instance. It is just empty object. Okay, let us see now what they mean to say. If you say function which accepts obj, now I'm printing this over here. See what happens. Can you see? We have used arrow function. Remember that. We have used the arrow function. And this keyword inside arrow function behaves differently than this keyword inside this function behaves. Can you see? Earlier it was arrow function. Earlier it was arrow function. Just let me clear it and see now it is pointing to what empty object if i write function over here i'm sorry console.log obj and function obj like this so we are doing something like we are doing something like this function obj console.log just moment what happened to the settings okay settings are okay 
fine so this is what they mean to say here this keyword intentionally set to the reference to the event emitter instance to which listener is attached means this what they want to say over here this 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 is pointing to this reference so here they want to say like that this is pointing to what this reference event emitter reference okay so from here also if you want to emit you can emit also like this this dot emit from here you can if you want to emit one ema event from here you can do that like this that's why they have said this reference to that reference to the this keyword okay like this now here they have referred for the arrow function it is possible to use es6 arrow functions as a listener however when you are doing this this keyword will no longer point to the event emitter that's what we have seen right so if i say obj and if you do like this it will this won't be pointing in this case this won't be pointing to this event emitter but this won't be pointing to one of the empty object that is okay no problem i'll push this much code please go through this much code set timeout is absolutely what you can say used just for showing demo it is not required actually it is not required actually okay then here we can say node js events we'll discuss events a little bit let me push this i have pushed the code please go through the code in a 5 minutes or 2 to 3 minutes we will start again
प्लीज अपडेट मी वन्स यू आर डन विकास ओके सो व्हाट डज द क्यू वर्ड पी एम डॉट ऑन ऑन व्हाट व्हाट एक्चुअली डज ओके इफ यू सी ऑन इज अ बिल्ट इन मेथड वेयर इज ऑन ऑन इज अ बिल्ट इन मेथड सी दिस ऑन इवेंट एमीटर डॉट ऑन दैट हैज बीन गिवन टू यू एड इज लिसनर फंक्शन टू एंड ऑफ द लिसनर्स एरे array for the event named event name so it adds the what you can say your listener if you see our code we have added one listener we call this function as what we call this function as listener function we call this function as what listener function and see if you have 10 listeners let's let's have one more listener you may have two to three listeners like this and here i can say console.log here i can say console.log 1 here i can say it is 2 and here i can say it is 3 now the execution is a synchronous execution the way you have registered in a same fashion they would be getting called see now node main dot js 1 2 3 in a sequence in a sequence you are getting all three events now just try to change the sequence this is interview question remember that this is the interview question how listeners would be getting invoked in the node js the way you have registered in a same fashion they would be getting called the way you have registered in a 3 one 2 Yeah, can you see three, one, two, correct? Three, one, two. It is getting called by means of three, one, and two. So this is interview question. The way you have called in the same fashion that would be getting called. Well, this is okay now. This is okay, and there are some experimental features. Can you see? Capture the rejections from the promises. Let's let's not discuss that thing right now. Means, what if your event, this object, is a promise object? How do you handle it? If this is a promise, how do you handle it? That's what they are asking to do. Right. Let's try to pass the promise over here. Let's try to pass the promise. I can say, const. promise i hope you remember the promise have you do you remember the promise we have seen that yes sir resolve and reject resolve and reject so from here i can say resolve this object resolve what this object and here i can say promise so instead of passing normal object what we are passing promise then how it works exactly let me run the code and see output what happens see here node main dot js see got an object object is nothing but what promise object but this is not the output remember that here you are printing the promise object okay and this let, let's resolve again here i can write timeout after 
फाइव हंड्रेड मिली सेकेंड्स आफ्टर फाइव हंड्रेड मिली सेकेंड्स आई वुड लाइक टू रिजॉल्व इट फाइव थाउजेंड मिली सेकेंड्स आई वुड लाइक टू रिजॉल्व द सक्सेस नाउ देर इज अ रियल चैलेंज मीन्स दिस इज एमिटिंग द प्रोमिस एंड दैट प्रोमिस इज गेटिंग एग्जीक्यूटेड आफ्टर फाइव थाउजेंड मिली सेकेंड्स आई होप yesterday's diagram is in front of your eyes now what is happening just keep that diagram in front of your eyes whenever you see these callbacks and nesting of all these things make sure that that picture come in front of your eyes okay let's have node main dot js promise is pending you didn't get the output can you see here you didn't get what output either you need to say obj dot then it's a promise right dt arrow either obj dot then dt arrow console dot log your dt right either this thing you need to do just clear it and see node main dot js yeah can you see this line is printing the thing or here this function has to be async do we have seen this functionality async and await uh, no sir i think callback we have seen promises we have seen and we have missed this functionality async and await correct right okay okay i'll cover this in a j short one of the i will cover it but just remember i have written async over here and now node main dot js okay well okay so it won't work in this way we need to put await uh, keyword i think in this no i think we need to put here well this function is just a moment ah huh? we don't need to put if you see here yeah here they are putting a sync no just a moment how to resolve i just need to see that whenever your event is returning the promise one thing is this but how to achieve this by means of async and await so this is this is a normal way means whenever your emitter is emitting the promise right on this object you can straight away say then and after that you would be getting the result and this is the much recommended way you need to work with but i am just trying recommended way this is only the recommended way okay but i am trying some another approach also okay now when i say if yes so if my event emitter is emitting the promise if my event emitter if my event emitter is emitting the promise this is a recommended way to handle it okay this is a recommended way to handle it but what are the another ways that that's what i am i just want to do
ओके सो 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 दे दे से दे जस्ट हैव रिकमेंडेड दिस वे ओनली इफ यू सी हियर लेट्स ट्राई टू गूगल इट आउट इवेंट एमिटर नोड जेस एमिट प्रॉमिस using async and await we are trying but our recommended way is this do not forget that recommended way is this now we are trying some tricks and tips we are just trying the tips i want to emit the promise that that's what i am requiring so they are not emitting the promise anywhere emit here also something like that okay so their concern they are saying is that actually event emitters you can use promises and then also instead of event emitter what you can use promises and then but that's not my concern right now my concern is that what if i emit the promise i just need to do this thing right i just need to do this thing or i need to write one function that function how that won't will work don't know okay fine just just keep it in this way right just keep it i will make a little bit research and i will update you how exactly no we are correct we have implemented properly but any hack way is there or not using async and await i am trying that thing right so i am trying what that thing let us see i, I will little bit research and tell you afterwards now can we, uh, can we declare one constant over here of using the await and resolve that promise but uh, who is async in that case uh, object will be async because object is the promise no? this one yes okay and then then constant result equals to await uh, obj here itself or outside this no in, inside the function only likewise below the uh, the then function to where we have result you can comment that and we can constant uh, result equals to await obj i'm just thinking this way and we can print the result let us see i think it will work yes this is the one way by async and await right but what if there is a error right and that's why this way is recommended this way is what recommended way so what here you can do dot catch also if that promise has failed you can have dot catch also catch sir uh, what's that so the r program will uh, halt uh, while uh, reboot yes our program will uh, halt while like inside this uh, uh, listener okay no just moment and let, let me type this then we will discuss yeah what did you say uh, i was saying like uh, inside the listener our program will halt uh, while resolving the promise yes there is there is a wait kind of thing there is a wait okay for that for that there is a one thing called as once right okay. so if you think that your has only 
only we happen only once you are going to attach what i was coming to this point only em dot once only once this would be getting triggered this event would be getting triggered what only once getting that so these two are the approaches but remember that if you want to handle the errors this is a much recommended way right and if you want to get the functionality of async and await you can use this thing also this i was trying okay now and sir, uh, while using uh, uh, async and await uh, can we use a uh, try catch block yeah we can use i'll 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 explain that whenever we discuss async and await right we'll discuss all the possibilities of that thing you can do everything whatever you can do by means of uh async and uh, by means of promises and then you can do everything by means of async and await but i just want to wanted to show you that you can take this approach also or you can take this approach also okay both the things are actually okay no problem fine yes sir okay so i'll push this much code and here i can say once node js events once and promise async await let, let me remove this once but remember that here you can add once once will add only one event okay any query i have pushed the code please go through the code for 2 minutes event emitter once pro promise async await I have pushed the code. Please go through the code and see. ओके विकास यस सर एनी क्वेश्चन नो सर आई जस्ट वांटेड टू चेक हाउ द एग्जीक्यूशन हैपेंस 
फर्स्ट लाइन या दिस विल एग्जीक्यूट ओके इम्पोर्ट विल हैपन देन दिस विल एग्जीक्यूट देन दिस विल एग्जीक्यूट एंड वेट फॉर द इवेंट्स दिस विल एग्जीक्यूट एंड वॉट वेट फॉर द इवेंट्स सो दैट इट कैन कॉल दिस फंक्शन देन जस्ट फॉरगेट अबाउट द प्रोमिस फॉरगेट अबाउट द प्रोमिस एंड हियर यूर नॉर्मल जावास स्क्रिप्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ओके देन इवन फॉरगेट अबाउट दिस टाइम आउट जस्ट दिस लाइन एंड जस्ट ट्राई टू कमेंट दिस आउट सो हाउ मेनी हाउ मेनी फंक्शन यू हैव यू हैव ऑन फंक्शन यू हैव एमिट फंक्शन एमिट विल एमिट द इवेंट्स फॉर दिस की कॉल एज इन वॉइसेस सो If you want to listen events on the key invoices, right? You need to write on. So you are saying that first this line will execute, then this line will execute, then this line will execute, then this em dot em dot emit will execute. After em dot emit, this this particular listener would be getting executed, right? So here you are saying that to the invoices to the invoices key, please send this object. to the invoices key please send this javascript object and that object is nothing but here so what will happen what will happen your emit right emit will emit to the key called as invoices where already when you say on when you say on you already have registered the listeners listeners means this to this function these are nothing but what listener function and whenever you say emit emit to the particular key and emit to the invoices key that will call this particular function that will call this particular function along with the data you have passed so this much part is nothing but what event data this much part is nothing but what event data so first line second line on third line and on the fourth em dot emit emit to the invoices key emit to the invoices key and what you need to emit this javascript object you need to emit this javascript object you need to emit right so whenever you call the emit function it will search for the key invoices in a registered listeners right and it will call all the listeners which are registered over this key sequentially it will call all the listeners registered over here sequentially okay if you have any question please ask me again if you have any query please ask me hello you there vikas hello Vikas Hello Yeah Vikas are you there Pradeep can you hear me Yes sir I can hear you Vikas Hello Vikas you are not audible I think uh, some network issue here Let me send and messages Okay okay fine fine so this is about what you can say event emitters even we have well this is not a, a normal approach to pass the promise over here but we just have tried how it works exactly okay now now next node concept is buffers next node concept is what buffers now what do you mean by buffers first when you talk about buffers remember that you are talking about the storage or you are talking about the storage which holds the data you are talking about what storage when you talk about buffers 
you are talking about storage whenever huge data would be there how you you are going to store that particular data this is a basic node package and we require most of the time buffer objects are used to what you can say represent fixed length of byte sequence right many node.js api supports the buffers the buffer class is a subclass of uint what you can say it array and class extends it methods that cover additional use cases node.js api accept plain array whenever buffers are supported well while buffer class is available within the global scope remember that buffer class is available within the global scope it is still recommended to explicitly reference via import or the require statement right via what require statement now see here this is how you will create the buffer this is how create the buffer the, the, these are some codes over there right you may follow this thing and you can create the buffer buffer is all about storage location you are storing bytes now whenever you are communicating with low level network api or whenever you are communicating with the existing file system you need to deal with the bytes what i'm saying whenever you need to communicate with the low level network calls like tcp tcp is not going to give you a string and int and jsons right whenever you go to the no low level of the system you need to work with these fundamental units of your api right that is nothing but what buffers and lo uh, low level data structures this is one of the data structure buffer that all allocates some memory and how exactly does that we will see what they have said that is also important while buffer class is available in a global scope it is still recommended to explicitly reference it like this they said that buffer is already available in the global scope you can use that but but it is recommended from the node side you should create a new buffer object and then you can use it right now we can see how exactly this works let's try to let's try to create some buffers here i'll rename it rename this is a main for event emitter main for buffer dot js so first thing you need to import the module node module const buffer you would be requiring buffer inside your project in the beginning this is that well let's not go to this d.ts this is weird we are using node js and here you can say buffer dot alloc allocate how many byte block you need to allocate i need to allocate a byte block of 10 let's try to console dot log we can say console dot log const b1 like this and i can say b1 node main buffer dot js can you see here you will get buffer like this zero if you can say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten blocks are in are like this to string you can see 
function dot to string to json it converts to the json also can you see how json it has created type is equals to buffer and data uh, units data units are 10 data units are what 10 string is nothing but normal string let me try to print that string console dot log b1 dot to string what's happening b1 dot okay I think string is not working in that way right I, I got the scenario but here if you see just don't call to string right now just call b1 let's get the object which tells you 000 is available over there okay so so you can create buffer in this way then another way of creating buffer can you see you can create a buffer from an array if you see you can create a buffer from an array let's get this one or but remember that this is how we will print the json so let's b2 is equals to buffer dot alloc 10 would be filled by 2 like this can you see 0 to 0 to 0 to would be filled in this case where you can create buffer const b3 is equals to buffer dot from from 10 20 30 console dot log b3 okay now see it is something different right now when you creates a buffer containing the bytes 1 to 3 creates a buffer which containing the bytes 1 to 3 but these are in the octal remember that now hello hello these are octet hello these are the octet streams remember that what these are these are the octet streams if you see okay I will explain in this way const b4 is equals to buffer from hello I can say what this this part buffer from from hello now let's try to console.log b4 and see it it tells you something like bytes all these are nothing but what bytes it will store your data in the terms of byte only okay now here if you here if you well well like this you can tell also hex or what exactly and there are many situations where where 
you will find buffers are used in this way right now let's try to make a two string two string these are the byte arrays remember that can you see when you make two string now it will show you and hello it will show you over here and hello now again const u or arr is equals to this u arr is equals to new see this thing and v3 you can pass over here and let's try to print console dot log arr console dot log arr now see this this output is byte buffer and this output is see can you see it's typical int array whatever you have passed whatever you have passed that array you can see over here but concern is that whenever you store this you store in the form of byte array only you store this in the form of what you can say byte array only and you will find many operations over here like buffer dot length is there right now why i have taken this thing why i have taken this thing because many of the node packages internally uses right many of the node packages internally uses this buffer and whenever you want to work with whenever you want to work with uh, networking level things or whenever you want to work with any other things right which are using buffers at that time you need to know these things at that time what you need to know all these things right now if you want to write into the buffer you have created something consider that you have created this buffer buffer you have allocated for 10 and if you want to write it b1 dot write you can write like this b1 dot write and here i can say hi okay here i have written hi b1 dot write is a functionality see here hi and here you can say b1 dot two string b1 dot two string and i can print normal b1 also yeah can you see it prints hi also and it prints a complete byte buffer can you see 68 69 that has been only populated okay that has been only populated now what is the 68 and 69 if you can say ascii codes Yeah, can you see 68 and 69 68 and 69 right so it prints that over here 68 and 69 okay now Now, what 
what is this? same thing i think these are the hex values if you see these are what the hex values hexadecimal values let us check once in my opinion these are the hexadecimal values yeah encoded each byte encoded each byte as two hexadecimal characters data truncation may occur when decoding the strings and happen fine Converting buffer into the string, converting buffer into the string uses one of the above reference for the decoding. Converting string into the buffer is referred as encoding. Node.js also support following binary to text encoding. For binary to text encoding, the naming convention is reversed. Converting a buffer into a string, converting a buffer into a string is typically referred as encoding and converting a string into the buffer is decoding i think this is a hex character data truncation yeah this is a hex character in my opinion what exactly it is it is a hex character Node.js buffer Okay, let us see Data dot to string they have said that just passed hex Yeah, can you see here 68 69 these are the hex characters for sure now we are printing this b1 line number 6 b1 dot string dot hex and can you see 68 69 is a hex character that is sure now here you can put ascii also yeah hi it is printing what hi a normal to string which is giving you the string so why i am showing you all these things you need to struggle in this way that what are the and how exactly the format are getting stored and what things what things are there exactly internal right buffers can be used buffer is used in variety of the node packages remember that whenever you get the data you get the buffer you straight away don't get the string in the tcp or somewhere in the low level networking api you never get straight away string like this you always get buffer like this now you need to know how to convert buffer to the string and your required data type that's why all these efforts have been taken well you need to make a rnd i also don't know much of the operations on the buffers a lot of things you need to do and you need to learn the things on the fly it's not like that everything would be told to you everything would be told to you 
right you need to make a habit of learning the or implementing the things okay No, no, no. See, that's what I told you. Many networking level API, many TCP level API, even file system gives you the buffer. And the people who have written the API, third party also, they give you buffer and they say that you convert on your own. Okay. You decode on your own. We are just going to give you the buffer. And next part, it's your responsibility. That's what they say. Okay. Ah, there would be buffer there would be buffer there would be no string straight away or no int straight away but you need to know how to convert and how to work with these things got it i'll push this much code and you can say node.js well there are many operations concat operation you can concat the buffers you can do on your own but the fundamentals should be very clear what is a buffer how to convert and how to do other things buffers okay i'll push the code please go so basically it is directly uh, uh, allocating a memory right? yes yes straight away it's memory allocation it's a low level right and if you see there are some api allocate unsafe can you see contains uninitialized buffer of the length 10 this is a faster than uh, this is a faster than calling the alloc but return buffer instance might contain the old data that needs to be overwritten by fill or the write or other functions that fill the buffers content means this can give you absolutely anything it's related to the alloc only this is the much faster than the alloc but you need to perform two operations fill and write it will give you the older data it might give you because you are dealing with the memory you are you might get some older data buffer instance might contain old data that needs to be overwritten using fill and write that's why people prefer alloc which will give you the fresh buffer which is a clean buffer and these many are the things how you can allocate the buffer right they have given over here then character encodings here they have given how do you encode and like that buffer and typed some api are giving you typed arrays also these things also right but they can you see if you have a buffer you can put it inside array and you can get the output like this that's what they have told but what i suggest is that even iteration if you can see you need to iterate like this const b of buffer and go on printing it will print this one and two right so what i think is that just go on implementing it and the moment you will get the buffer then come to this page otherwise that would be okay this much would be the okay for you fine i have pushed the code please go through the code in five minutes we'll start again yeah i'll be back in a minute
हेलो ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट बफर्स एंड अदर थिंग्स नाउ now hello yes sir we can hear you okay just a moment ha huh? i'm little bit in middle of something we'll start in moment these are few important modules stream there are many see these many are the modules but you need to know in the beginning few of them yeah now see whatever we are going to use the http or tcp all that things are internally built by using buffers then your events and the streams right now how, how exactly these things are working we will see just a moment now you will get to know implementation of the events how exactly this is happening implementation of what events how this thing event is exactly happening how streams have implemented the events exactly that we will see okay but when you talk about stream sorry when you talk about streams remember that you are talking about the data there are two reading modes if you can see means you can create the readable streams you can create the writable streams right you can create the readable streams and you can create the writable streams and reading is also having two types you can read by means of flowing data means you can read you can read the flowing data by means of event emitter and you can uh, you can read the accumulated data by means of what you can say stream dot read these are two different options they have given right can you see here here you are creating the here here we are creating one stream let me tell you what exactly we are doing we are creating a stream and that stream should read the data from one of the file i'll, I'll create one new file here you can say main stream dot js main for stream dot js okay now what we need to do i need to read the input file let's have one input file over here my dot txt my dot txt and this my dot txt would be having some text like this let's copy this text and put it here i am putting this text 
over here okay this much text we have we are just putting this text inside this now i want to read this right well you can read this by means of straight away fs package right just go here i i can create const const fs you remember file package we have used require require fs okay we have got the package now we can have const rs i can say reading stream and then fs dot fs dot create read stream and you need to pass name of the stream you are reading remember that my in a current directory my dot txt i want to read this file from the current directory okay now you need to set the encoding also rs dot set encoding and here i can say utf8 utf is unicode transmission format utf8 okay now you can now this reader stream can give you different different messages this reader stream can give you different different messages like rs dot on can you see event emitter rs dot on error there are some particular events just scroll up they have given some events here yeah finish if you can see here so there are some events like when you say readable stream create read stream that's what we are doing create fs dot create read stream and stream gives you from stream provides you some default yeah yeah see events close drain error finish pipe and pipe data right readable this is for the readable stream close data end error pause readable resume these are events we need to worry about so here we can have i'll use one error event i'll use one error event and here i can pass the lambda error arrow let's have if there is any error you can get internally events are used remember that event emitter is used in internally console.log error right this is for the error then let's on completion on what you can say end means reading has been completed then you can have console.log and completed right then rs dot on this read stream remember that dot on if you see pause is there data is there close is there resume is there Let, let's use now data straight away data and here you can get dt is equals to again what we can do console dot log data console dot log data and i am doing like this okay see these are different events and these are what different different events getting that these are different different events now let us run the project and see 
if it is matching your expectations or not node main hyphen stream see here completed event when it is getting called after everything completed event is getting called when it is getting called completed event completed event is getting called now i'll show you one thing here console dot clear let's clear the console yeah now if anything is there well just i have shown you to clear it right if anything is there you can clear in this way right then then we will do one thing let's have one variable let's have one variable let fldt is equals to empty fldt is equals to what empty and this dot sorry this dot sorry not just fldt is equals to dt and we can enlarge the scope and see now fldt is equals to dt now what would be the output console dot log fldt i'll just print this out okay can you see what is the output is it expected one why it is showing you empty character over here because we have assigned uh, empty string to dt correct but this dt you have assigned to the fldt means dt is having complete string you might be getting like that your dt would be having complete string right you might be thinking that dt will give you one shot everything it's not like that dt actually gives you data one by one right now if you do dt plus equals to if you see now fldt plus equals to dt we are on the data Well, if you print dt, you'll get everything. But okay, got it. Can you tell me the reason? Sir, the, the line number fifteen. Ah, uh, is, is a async. Yeah. Line number fifteen is what? Async. And that's why, if you try to print this, right? If you try to print this, just try to print the fldt. Now, how do you solve this problem? I want to read the data. Concern is that. Concern is that you need to write whatever you want to write in a data function. You cannot write over here. Remember that. If you write, many people do this thing. Many people do this thing. They think that okay, FLDT is working over here. FLDT is working over here. Let's console dot log fldt so I can get the results. It's not like that. It's a async function. Remember that. It is what async function, and this async function is giving you in this way. The async function is working in this way. So whatever you need to write the code that should be written inside this data only. Whatever code. you want to perform on the data that needs to be written in this brackets if you write here it's error or you may see something 
different you may something different this is not expected one it will give you empty all the time because this line is getting executed before execution of this line this is a normal execution and this is execution on the event loop this is how readable stream works you can read in this way even you can write the data right even you can write the data and you can get the results you can write the data and you can get the results how do you write so if you want to write the data if you want to write the data just moment huh? if you want to write the data you need to have a writable stream now one concern is that whenever you are consider that this file is getting updated after every 5 minutes my.txt some someone is going to writing a logs inside this my.txt right someone is writing logs inside this my.txt at that time how do you read every time you read and your completion or gets completed you get this event fired you get what this event fired if you go to the data see here chunk the chunk of data for stream that are not operating in object mode the chunk will be either string or buffer see chunk will be either string or buffer for a stream that are in a object mode chunk can be javascript value or the null the data event is emitted when stream is what you can say completing the ownership of chunk of the data consumer right this may occur whenever the stream is switched in flowing mode by calling readable.py and readable.resume okay or attaching the listener callback data event the data event will also be emitted when whenever read method calls and see they are te telling you two things this may occur whenever the stream switched in flowing mode by calling readable.py readable.resume this method would be getting called or okay just a moment huh? the data event is emitted when stream is the meaning of this you can consider as end or the complete ownership of the chunk of the data to consumer right so ownership of a chunk of a data to consumer this may occur whenever a stream is switched in a flowing mode by calling readable.py or readable.resume or by attaching listener on the data the data event will also emitted whenever the readable.read method is called and chunk of data is available to return so concern is that chunk of data is available to be returned right at that time this this function gets called whenever this function get called whenever whenever either pipe and resume operation has been completed right this may occur whenever the stream is switched from flowing mode by calling readable pipe or readable dot resume so they have said there are two modes if you go about read stream the servers and others are using yeah implementing the readable stream
will they have given somewhere i have read yesterday okay all the readable st readable streams begin in paused mode but can be switched to the flowing mode if you see two reading mode in a flowing mode data is read from the underlying system automatically and provided to an application as quickly as possible using the events via event emitter interface right so in paused mode stream dot read method must be called explicitly in a paused mode stream dot read method must be called explicitly to read chunks from chunks the data from the stream a readable stream is is readable stream begin in a paused mode but can be switched to the flowing mode in a following ways right adding a data event we are using following uh, we are using flowing mode remember that add data event handler by calling resume method by calling pipe method and pipe method to send the data to the write table so i'll show you by means of code itself so here you can say rs dot read right and let's try let me comment out this console dot log this thing just try to it is giving you what null now let's go to this read method Okay, here we can say hundred. Okay, let's try in this way while true right let's have while true then what we can say rs dot will above code all should also work I'll if ch is exactly equals to null break the loop else console dot log ch readable dot on readable okay inside they have written it when it becomes readable then rs dot on readable then you can have one function and inside that function you can write the loop like this yeah can you see this is not in a flowing mode 
this is in a this is in a normal mode where you need to every time until you reach to the null until this character becomes null you need to go on reading even now i told you this code should also work console.log uh, rs dot read and 100 of first 100 length okay let's comment this out because we were not getting yeah can you see first 100 characters you can read a length of first 100 characters you can read this is also okay now this part is nothing but what read till you reach null null means what rs dot read so it goes on it goes to the first character then second character then third character then last character fourth character until it reaches what last character over here which is nothing but what null if null it is going to break the loop otherwise it is going to print the character or you can accumulate the character so for reading you can use two modes so whatever they have suggested that two modes we have discussed what are the two modes first mode readable sorry just go sc scroll up a flowing mode and the normal mode streams well this might be you might not be interested in this right but see in flowing mode and in a paused mode paused mode means what happen your reading has happened must be called explicitly to read the to read chunks of data from a stream and here as means means when you can use this if someone is writing to that file right and from there writing has completed so it is going to say that i have completed writing and data has been updated automatically this would be getting called automatically this would be getting called so this fl data forget about that so it is saying that earlier data plus recent data i want to print both of them right then you can use one of the variable or you can use a proper data structure means if someone is writing this file if someone is writing this file and then you need to read this file right there are two modes either you can read in a one shot right either you can read in a one shot like this or you can get the events time to time means this file has means writer says that that's what they are saying adding a data event listener or stream dot resume stream dot pipe means calling the stream dot pipe method to send data to the writable means it is saying that whenever you get the event data right which means that you have provided event handler to the data calling the resume method if someone is called resume method on the stream this event would be getting fired and stream dot pipe method to send data to a writable means from here if someone is sending data to the writable this method would be getting called right so readable in the normal mode in a paused mode and in the flowing data mode in a flowing data in a flowing data data is read from the underlying system automatically and provided to an application as quickly as possible using the events underlying system data is read from the underlying system automatically and provided application as provided to application as quickly as possible using the events right a readable stream begin in a paused mode but can be switched to the flowing mode in one of the following ways a uh, most simple and the suitable way is to is to have this thing is to have what add the data listener this thing a readable can switch back to the pause mode using one of the thing if no pipe just forget about these two right these are a bit complicated right and you will get to know at the time of real data processing right at the time of real data processing but just just remember flowing mode and paused mode this is a paused mode this is paused mode and this is what the flowing mode is right now they have they have tell they, they have told over here how to switch from pause to the flowing flowing to the pause there are these these are that conditions 
so may begin in a pause mode and can be switched to the flowing mode a readable can switch back to the pause mode using one of the following these are the conditions right you don't need to worry about that right now correct so this is about streams reading now how do you write on the streams if you want to write you need to have a writable stream now just go to the stream again stream and writable stream see writable stream is pretty easy how how do you write it if you want to write write we already have fs package over here we already have fs package here const writable stream is equals to fs dot create writable stream <coughs> fs dot what create writable stream and in a same file my dot dot my dot txt in the same file i need to write in the same file i need to write and then you can say ws writable stream dot write data and here you can say my data and in the utf8 utf8 right and you need to make ws dot end until you make a end it won't be completing it won't be completing its what you can say it won't be completing its processing and ws dot on you can say two events you can generally work with error error and console dot log error ws dot on here you can say finish and we can say data writing finished okay let's run the project fldt this fldt is not available data writing completed go to the my.txt can you see my data has been written over here this is how read and write stream will work remember that i'll push the code node.js streams read and write read and write and i am pushing the code well simple thing we have tried read write hello yes sir clear yes sir so basically uh, what you what we have seen is nothing but uh, handling the file uh, with the event listener right ha huh. no handling the file with the stream you can do this thing well fs dot read fs dot write internally happens in this way only but we have seen a little bit native level api okay but uh, the, the readable uh, event or the data event uh, which is fired from the uh, file system right ha huh, these are fired from the file system okay fs and uh, in the uh, readable uh, event uh, we get data all data uh, all data from the file system. correct in one, in one shot and in the data event uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the chunk by chunk here here you get a chunk by chunk here in a one shot and there is a switching techniques they have written over there switch from right switch from flowing mode to the switch from paused mode switch from pause mode to the switch from flowing mode that presently don't worry once you get working on this you will understand these things okay so, so sir i have one question here yeah like suppose uh, are my uh, my.txt file is uh, changing uh, 
No, uh, yeah, that is also possible, but still you need to write some code for that. It will not happen as, as, as usual. You need to write a code for that. Okay, I thought that data event is what means like something else. No, no, not like that, right? You need to write code for that. I can share a code snippet also. How do, how do you work with that? Loggers generally build on this, uh, this part. If you have some loggers, that loggers work on this part if you want to build your own logger and you need to write it into the file you need to use the streams over there for sure Vikas do you have any questions but requesting you all you both to practice these things and push your codes on the git so I can check your codes Regarding whatever we learn every day, we have to... Yeah, whatever practice you every day, you need to push on the GitHub. Okay. It, it takes less than one minute, right, for pushing the code. Yes, sir. Fine? Yes, sir. So, we'll meet on the next weekend with the new topics. I think HTTP and the related to HTTP and TCP on the Saturday and on the Sunday we will start with the Express JS okay fine shall we disconnect okay thank you I'm disconnecting